You're watching the ACC on ESPN from Tallahassee. It's one of the grand openings of a night game for Florida State. Osceola aboard Renegade. Game on. Jimbo Fisher is down below with our Tom Rinaldi. Let's go to Tom. Alongside Jimbo Fisher, Jimbo, you've talked about what an opportunity this could be, what a building block. How do you know what convinces you you're ready? I just look in our kids' eyes. They're ready. They're 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 quick. They're not they're not in a hurry. Their minds are going right. They're thinking and they're looking their eye when they walked out of that tunnel and out of that locker room. Best of luck to you, Jimbo. Let's go to Aaron Andrews on the other side. Aaron. Tom, thanks so much. Coach, let me ask you, so much has been made of this scene tonight. What's key for your team in overcoming challenges that an atmosphere like this presents? Well, you know, it's a long night, three and a half hours of ball. Hopefully you start off all right, but if you don't, you got to weather the storm and keep going. Thanks for your time. Fred. Aaron, thank you very much. The Sooners will handle the ball first as the Knowles defer. And there is Bob's younger brother. That's Mark Stooch, the defensive coordinator, who hopes to have a much better night than his defense had last year in Norman. 80,000 on hand. Trey Franks and Brennan Clay will be back deep to return to kickoff for the number one team in the land. Hopkins sends a low line drive to the back of the end zone and Trey Franks will take a knee it'll come out of the 20 yard line and so here comes junior quarterback Landry Jones Herbie he's on target to break every passing record ever established at Norman and he's got some good names he's going past well there's no doubt about it 30 of 40 380 yards and four touchdowns last year against his Seminole defense but that was in Norman as we've seen with this up tempo offense a little bit tougher to execute when you're dealing with the crowd and a defense it's pinning its ears back look for Florida State to try to change up their looks tonight to try to confuse Landry Jones and that offensive line. Clay will open as the running back. Sooner fans know they'll rotate three or four at that tailback position. Up under center. Miller, the fullback, H-back look. They throw on first down to the outside. Kenny Stills, who did not play in the game against Tulsa, he had been suspended because of a DUI during the offseason. But Kenny Stills, one of the great weapons for Oklahoma, is back. He's number four. And here come the Sooners again. This is what we all wanted to see. Is Florida State going to be able to get lined up in position and ready to go? Now Clay squirts for the first down out to the 39-yard line. LaMarcus Joyner, the free safety, makes the stop for the Knowles. That's a 13-yard gain. Great execution up front. The offensive line really trying to set the tone here early to try to get a push. That time creating a nice seam. Confidence in the offensive line. They spread everybody wide, empty the backfield, split it out to the right, and Ryan Broyles with his first catch of the night against Tulsa. 14 catches, 158 yards, a certain All-American and a leading candidate for the Bolitnikoff Award. Defensive coaches always talk about leverage. Leverage means keep the ball in a position where the rest of the defense can come and corral the ball carrier or the receiver. That time, nice job by Florida State of staying outside, giving the rest of the defense a chance. Second down and seven. There's the pistol formation. Quarterback still closer to the center, the tailback right behind him. Quick throw to that screen pass outside. Royals could not get the first down. The Knowles hold and force a third down. And Florida State has a player down. It was interesting there, Brent. I don't know if we can see this, but Greg Reed looked like he was actually able to come off the field and then to slow things down, maybe he looked over and actually dove onto the field. And now, of course, it's a pivotal third down here early in this game. But Greg Reed looked like he was ready to come off of the field. And then he kind of, he's in on a tackle. He's right there, lowers the head, makes the play on Ryan Broyles. What was interesting Oh, no, about that it, left leg. Oh, yeah. 
He looked like he was going to try to hobble off, but they've really instructed their players, don't limp off. If you have an injury, just go down. Well, Millard is in, the Oklahoma fullback, H-back, and they split him out to the right. This is third down and two. Now they bring him in motion. Strength to the left. They run Clay in that direction for a first down, and Trey Millard leading the way. So the fullback, the 255 pounder from Columbia, Missouri, led us that way. The changeup that I've seen here in these first few snaps from Florida State and Mark Stoops, an odd front, three down linemen. They typically play with four, which what happens is Brandon Jenkins, maybe the best pass rusher in the country at times, playing out in space. Come back to hand it off to Miller that time. As a lead blocker, he earned an opportunity to carry the ball that time. This is a young man who wants to play fullback at the next level. And he could do a lot of things. Before the night's over, the Sooners will throw a pass or two to him. And he now is split way out to the right. Yeah, he is so versatile. He's a fullback, an H-back, a tight end. And like you said, he'll line up at wide receiver. Ben Haber in the center and that veteran offensive line will protect Landry Jones, who's all alone on this second down. Knowles can't get to him. And he throws to Broyles for a first down at the 36-yard line. And Landry's jersey remains clean here in the early going. And that's a big key for Oklahoma. It's an option route for, for Broyles. And the thing that Broyles does such a good job on the inside is he's able to find space. I don't think there's another receiver in the country that has an ability to create and find space against a zone the way, La the way uh, Landry Jones with Ryan Broyles can do that. That was a big pickup of the first down. Landry Jones perfect here in the early going. Herbie 4 of 4, 25 yards. Hands back off to Clay, and they pound behind the middle. Eichert, Hayburn, and Evans. Well, they're going to need enough from their running game. You know, people get so caught up in Oklahoma and their tempo, and Landry Jones and the quick passes and the rhythm that he tries to get into. But a great Oklahoma offense, the one we saw a couple years ago, had the ability to control the line of scrimmage and get physical. In fact, that was an area of emphasis in the offseason this year. Now Brennan Clay, the sophomore from San Diego, reaches out for another first down. Christian Jones makes the stop for the Knowles. Even though that was a delayed hurry up, once Landry Jones got the call, he quickly got under center, and those Florida State defenders have been out there for nine plays now, and Oklahoma methodically just moving the ball down the field. Dominique Whaley, who lit up Tulsa with four touchdowns, the walk-on is quite a story. Number eight is now the running back for the Sooners. He's the second running back used here tonight. First down at the Knowles 25. Whaley's first carry of the night. Can he get the edge? He does. Still on his feet. Across into the red zone, the 19-yard line. What a story this young man from Lawton, Oklahoma is. Was not a blue chipper coming out of high school. Had a real good running back ahead of him. Went to school. Still wasn't number one. Left football, came back, Sooners gave him a chance, and Herbie, you just can't say enough about what the young man has done. Bob Stoops just raves about Whalen. And the fact that he is such an athlete, he put on 20 pounds, he's stronger. You know, when, when camp started, I think a lot of Sooners fans expected Brennan Clay, Roy Finch, and Brandon Williams to be the guy. That quick screen to Broyles, Broyles reaches for another first down. Terrence Parks, a safety, makes the stop. And Royals has caught four balls already, Irby. And not only that, just a little thing, but the, the recognition of the down and distance by Broyles, a veteran receiver, and he's really been doing this now for years. But a short, quick pass like that, he knows where the first down marker extends the ball across there just to make sure he picked up the first down. Roy Finch on the field, and there seemed to be some confusion. Now they'll signal the play in from the sideline. So Finch and Whaley. Finch is a fine receiver. Whaley is right behind Landry. Now there's two on that clock. He's got to hurry to get it off. And they burn a timeout. So with the seconds winding down on the play clock, 
Oklahoma uses its first timeout. We'll be right back. Thirteenth play of Oklahoma's opening drive coming up and as Herbie told you a year ago in Norman they scored a touchdown in their first four possessions and Herbie you and I were talking this is such an important drive yeah, in this game. I know it's the opening drive but with all the build up and the hype about maybe this year being different this is not how Florida State wants to start the game. They go back to a power eye with Clay and he was stopped around the 10 yard line. Check that that was Whaley number eight that was not Clay that is they left Whaley in at the tailback and, and, and execution in the red zone is always important but when you go up against this offense it's particularly important because you're going to give up yards between the 20s it's what Oklahoma does in the red zone that's going to determine if you end up stopping them and holding them to field goals and having a chance to win this game the Knowles show man as you can see on your screen see the corners buttoned up on the wide out second down straight ahead Reaching for the end zone. Very, very close. That is a, certainly a first down, and Whaley almost stuck it in again. He's becoming a touchdown maker. Let's take another look here, Herbie. Yeah, what a good push again. This offensive line is impressive. Miller gets in there, the fullback to lead the way. Good effort by Whaley. We'll have to maybe get another look to see if he extended it across the goal line. But Brent, the thing that's standing out to me right now that's different about Oklahoma, this is the opening drive to the to, to really the 2011 season with all res due respect to Tulsa is the way this offensive line is coming off the football. The Sooners did not have that ability. They had to rely always on Landry Jones in a passing game. I don't think he got it across the goal line. I think he's about on the six inch line. Yeah, we have another injured player down at the four yard line for the Knowles. That's that's one of the big fellas getting up there. It's like Moses McCray. Yeah. To see him walking off, but boy, the, 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 the execution obviously with Landry Jones, but 14 plays, they've had nine runs and five passes. And of course, Landry Jones five for five on those pass attempts. A great balance right now. Six minutes gone on this opening drive. And one of the things that has to disappoint the Florida State coaches right now is the fact that the middle of their defense, the tackles and the middle linebacker are not holding up. Oklahoma has been able to dip in there. They've used the pass, yes, on the edges, but they've gone to the middle just like they do there. And Landry Jones sneaks it, I believe, across, but Let's wait for the officials. There's the touchdown signal finally. The lost art, something Kirk Herbstreit used to do at Ohio State. He'll quarterback old school. Seat. Old school. <laughs> but what a, what a drive and how important is that for Oklahoma? Number one ranking on the road. Is Florida State for real? Is their defense capable of stopping Landry Jones? And the opening drive, 15 plays, 80 yards, and a touchdown. Andrew Jones extends that football across and gets that touchdown. That is huge. And now we'll see if E.J. Manuel and Florida State can answer that. And Ben Haber in the center has done some job. Here's Jimmy Stevens on for the extra point. Makes it a 7-0 score. The crowd grows quiet in Tallahassee. Just what Herbie said would happen if they scored on their first drive. The crowd, for the time being, is out of it. Come on back and see what the Knowles could do offensively. Unconquered. And the Knowles have to rally to back up their slogan here and Greg Reed is not going to return this kickoff race on the left knee we are told down below instead Rashad Green the talented freshman from Albany Georgia along with LaMarcus Joyner there is Rashad we'll see him as a wide receiver here tonight ball on the tee Patrick O'Hara kicks long field goals for the Sooners will kick us away. And here comes. Tripped up at the 25 yard line. Tony Jefferson over there defensively and let's remind everybody that Sunday NFL countdown presented by IBM is on ESPN at 10 a.m. Eastern. New start, three hours, the best in the business. The host, Chris Berman, analyst, Tom Jackson, Keyshawn Johnson, Mike Ditka, Chris Carter, NFL insiders provide all the news from stadiums around the league right up until 
the kickoff. And so here's the young man we hoped we would see here tonight. Certainly Sooner fans did. Travis Lewis back. Herbie, he makes such a difference. For uh, he, he's the inspiration, the leader of this defense. Many people thought he may miss the first four or five games. That's big news to see him out on the field. Ty Jones gets the first ball carry for the Knowles and Tom Ward, the middle linebacker. Florida State has got to be able to find some balance here. They don't want to get behind schedule, meaning second and long and third and long. And I think running the football and being able to try to sustain you know, that line of scrimmage to be able to open up the play action will be big tonight for E.J. Manuel. And also, E.J. Manuel is a great athlete. Obviously, he's going to have to run the football tonight. He also is going to have to create and make some plays. Jack Nicholas, two booze downs, very happy. His grandson, Nick O'Leary, has checked in. He's a tight end for Florida State. You'll recognize him. He doesn't wear any gloves. He's number 35, and they have put him down as one of the two tights. E.J. Manuel comes back, fires, and the first pass is complete to the outside to Kenny Shaw, who has to step up with Burt Reed ailing with an injured ankle. Well, Kenny Shaw has tremendous quickness, and this is really what I want to see tonight. It's not just about E.J. Manuel. It's about his supporting cast, and with Burt Reed ailing, guys like Kenny Shaw, Jared Higgins, Rodney Smith, Greg Dent, even a freshman, Rashad Green, are going to have to be able to get some separation. That time, outstanding route by Kenny Shaw to get open. Still two tight ends, but they empty the backfield. E.J. Manuel, he's a very good runner, and obviously Oklahoma... Is as aware of that as you are as a fan. And they keep EJ right there in that pocket. And he completes it outside. And that is Jack Nicholas's grandson. That is Nick O'Leary. He's a freshman out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. He comes out after making the catch. Kirby, that's unbelievable. He doesn't wear any gloves. I don't see many <laughs> receivers or tight ends. Now, I asked Jack, uh, what about gloves when he plays golf? Yeah, he wears a glove. Right? Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but he, he's kind of a throwback and just a tremendous athlete. Uh, fits right in here. And to be able to be able to be out on this field as a true freshman, I think, says a lot. Here's second down now. EJ walks up, make sure that everybody's on the same page right now. Brian Stork is his center here tonight. And there is the handoff to Jones. This will be third down coming up. Well, the impact players tonight for Florida State. Uh, it's obviously E.J. Manuel is going to have to make the plays and show tremendous poise. Chris Thompson, along with a host of running backs, are going to have to be able to take some of the pressure off Manuel. Up front, Andrew Datko, the left tackle. Watch him be able to try to go head-to-head -head against Frank, Frank Alexander, which should be a great matchup. And I said Rodney Smith, big, tall receiver. They love to throw the football to him downfield in their vertical passing game. The other tight end is Rutherford. This is your third down and four now. And Manuel's going to have to convert some third downs here tonight. From the pistol formation. On second effort, he's got the first down close to midfield. And it was Nick O'Leary, his second catch of this game. Making an impact early. Uh, look at Oklahoma's defense. They're dropping defensive tackles, a defensive end. Good exotic look, rushing three, dropping eight, try to create some confusion up front, but O'Leary showing strength to get off the line of scrimmage and then shake the tackle attempt there by Tom Ward, the middle linebacker. First down and ten, and Chris Thompson is in as the running back. Play fake, Manuel steps up, had a man wide open, and he overthrew it. It'll be second down coming up and let us check in tonight with Robert Flores. Robert, what do you got for us? Yeah, Robert, it's uh, tough when you play Navy. Irving and I are talking. They can dominate the clock with that offense of theirs. Yeah, very tough to prepare for that offense. It's surprising to see him holding South Carolina so far to 24. On second down, Manuel keeps it a beautiful fake. Still going. Makes a slick move to the outside. Takes a tackle. E.J. down the sideline and he's out of bounds. A beautiful run by quarterback E.J. Manuel from Virginia Beach, Virginia. And Jamel Fleming is forced to make the stop, but it's a 28-yard game. Uh, here's a design run, and they're trying to get the read here on 21, Tom Ward. Watch him ride this out. Ward takes the running back, of course, Thompson, and opens it up for Manuel. Now you get an idea, even for his size, at 6'5", about 245 pounds, he's got great acceleration, gets upfield in a hurry. He's a big boy running that quick. 
Great read there. And, and oh, Florida State Checking coming on right the back. Line. He stepped out of bounds, so they have moved the ball back to the 24 yard line. First down and 10. On that deep handoff, and that's Chris Thompson. He's the junior from Greenville, Florida. Both these teams will use several tailbacks here tonight. But obviously, Herbie, we see the difference between Manuel and Christian Ponder, who was the fine quarterback here, who was drafted in the first round by the Minnesota Vikings. Manuel just a little more mobile, well, and he showed it on that great run. And, and anytime you have a, a quarterback back in college football in a shotgun with the ability to run, it gives you an advantage with the numbers in that box area and Oklahoma is going to have to account for that which can open up the passing game Florida State will burn a timeout Emmanuel comes over to the sideline to talk to Jimbo Fisher and the assistants over there Jimbo of course is the man in charge of the offensive play calling as far as the Knowles are concerned as you look down from above Well, a reminder, tune in to an exciting new show, NFL 32, a highly interactive program driven by social media, where you, the fan, help decide the topics of the show. Join the hosts, Susie Colbert, Chris Mortensen, and a rotating cast of ESPN analysts weekdays at 6 Eastern on ESPN2. NFL 32, where everyone has a voice. Mr. Herb Street, who's your favorite NFL player of all time who wore number 32? Whew, a lot of good ones. Jimmy Brown? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you stopped answer? right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, young man from Ohio. That's you go it. no further. <laughs> All right, then Mr. Brown. Second down and nine now for E.J. Manuel in the nose. From the gun. Forced on the move again. There's a holding penalty going to be called. Wide open receiver in the end zone. Diving catch for a touchdown. A touchdown is on the field, but there is, I believe, a holding call. Yes, it is. That was Scott Novak, one of our fine referees, working this game here tonight. Sanders trying to hold on to a a block here you can see 77 against seven Nelson the linebacker blitzing he just grabs onto his jersey what's what's a shame there is I, I really think EJ Manuel was going to break contain and be able to run away from Nelson and still be able to get that pass attempt off but uh, that time Sanders right in front of the referee with the holding call to push Florida State back Florida State has slipped Lonnie Pryor their fine fullback into the game, but this is second down and 19 territory now. Manuel will try to make it manageable, and they move it to the 24 yard line. That gets it back to the original line of scrimmage, right in that area, and that's Bo Rutherford, the other tight end. You know, even though EJ Manuel is a tremendous athlete, the thing that you have to appreciate is the way he's really put in the work to absorb Jimbo Fisher's offense. And Jimbo Fisher asked his quarterback to be committed to the cause and the effort and the preparation in the offseason. And E.J. Manuel has done that. He is a quarterback who has athletic ability. He's not just an athlete back there running around. He's got great patience, and he'll have to show that tonight with his receivers. There, Stork is his center. Backfield empty. Bob Stoops calling a timeout to the top of your screen. Was concerned about the personnel that the Knowles had substituted with over here. So we'll take a break. There's Brent Venables talking things over with young Corey Nelson. We'll take a break. We are back for a third down and 10 for Florida State after that timeout by Oklahoma. And the Knowles send three receivers off to the left. Jared Haggins, freshman from Lakeland, Florida, is in this package. They try to overload the left here on this third down and 10. And Manuel again has to run, and this time he's going to be sacked. There is a penalty flag thrown. The umpire threw it as Tom Wart came barreling in on the quarterback. Holding on the offense, number 60. Penalties decline. 
So the penalty is declined because Manuel was sacked back at the 35 yard line. Now they have a tremendously effective field goal kicker. But let's see what they elect to do here. We saw him making 50 some yarders. Here he comes. He's the man with the golden shoe, ladies and gentlemen. Dustin Hopkins is going to come in, and during pregame warmups, he was making them with room to spare from 55. This is a 53, a 53 yard attempt for Hopkins. He made a 55 yarder to beat Clemson last year. This one is up. Look at that height he gets on that one, and he puts the Knolls on the board. What a weapon! A junior out of Houston. Hopkins kicks a 53 yard field goal. We are back in Tallahassee. Two series, 242 left in the first quarter. Oklahoma leads Florida State 7 3, and Hopkins will kick it off. Here's Franks coming out from a yard in. And he has stopped short of the 20 yard line. Mark Stoops, the defensive coordinator from Florida State, has got to continue to reach into his bag and try to come up with some different looks. That first drive did not go so well for the Seminoles after having all this time to prepare for that tempo. That last drive, they went right down the field in 15 plays and 80 yards for that touchdown. Let's see if the Noles can adjust. From the pistol, play the running back. Gets the call. And we note that Greg Reed, who was shaken up, has returned to the defense. One of their fine defensive backs. He's a junior from Valdosta, Georgia. And those of you down south know how many great ball players have come out of that part of Georgia. So far, communication not a problem at all for Landry Jones with this tempo getting the call to the offensive line and receivers. Second down and seven. Deflected complete. First down again. And that time it was Kenny Stills making his second catch of the game. They get a first down. They're looking to go with the tempo. Stills compliments Ryan Broyles on the other side so well. And Jones is still perfect. Six of six. Make it seven of seven now as he gets stills on the right side again, and it's another first down. Is there something in the water in Norman? I mean, Sam Bradford never missed a pass, and Landry Jones has taken the baton, and now it's his turn. He looks like he's just sitting back there bored. Even though Florida State's changing up the looks, he's got time to make good throws. And that's an offensive line. Fires far side. His receiver went down. Stills went down on that far side. That is a very strong arm to throw from the right hash. To that left side arm, that left sideline as far downfield as he did. That is a strong quarterback here. A lot of people talk this week about how would Florida State adjust to Oklahoma's tempo. I think Oklahoma's had a few adjustments. They are relying more on that offensive line and the running game here early in this football game on the road. Second and ten. The call comes in from the sideline. On the five. They get it off. They run clay. This will be third and long. So the Knowles defense with Mark Stoops here, Herbie, they've got him pretty much where they want him on this third down. This is where Mark Stoops wants to try to be creative. You know, Mark Stoops is good friends with Bo Pelini, of course, and his brothers on the other side. But Bo Pelini, Mark Stoops, these guys believe in a lot of pressure and taking away the underneath easy throws for Landry Jones. Let's see if the Knowles can get some pressure. They show pressure from the right side. And the Sooners picked it up. They saw the same thing you did at home. Here they come again, trying to get to him. They got to him. He's hit. Diving interception. Finally, Stoops is able to get pressure on the quarterback. And it forces the turnover. And for the first time tonight, there's a grass stain on Landry Jones, number 12. And this was the key tonight for Florida State's defense. Could they get after Landry Jones? Watch a delayed blitz by the nickelback. 
LaMarcus Joyner, the safety who walked up over the slot receiver. He got there just in time as Jones was just trying to throw the football away. Enough to be able to slow down Jones. He puts the ball into the air. And what a sensational effort by the linebacker, Bradham, to be able to make that big play. That's the key. The Knowles have to get after Jones, and that time they did it. Nigel Bradham, an outstanding linebacker. Ty Jones is the running back. Play action by Manuel after the turnover. Looking to go deep. Down the middle. The right side. He was going to fire. The middle was covered. He came back to the right and Rodney Smith. And it'll be second down in 10. What about the play call after the turnover, Herbie? Well, I love that, it, that Jimbo Fisher wanted to get aggressive. But this is part of the youth of E.J. Manuel. You're going to see Smith coming from the left to the right. Linebackers are up. Throw it now. He's a little bit late. And he also throws the ball behind. If he throws that to the sideline, there's no question Rodney Smith makes the catch and picks up huge yards and keeps the momentum. Good effort that time as far as the play calling, but that time E.J. Manuel with a, a good read, but just late with the throw and behind his receiver. Let's see if Fisher stays aggressive now on second and ten. Screen pass against that great Oklahoma rush. That was Ty Jones, the running back. They didn't break it, but they served notice on that rush to be careful by showing the screen. And they also brought the, the uh, safety, Aaron Colvin, off the left. He's clean, number 14, perfect time to go with the screen. And that's one way, as you said, Brent, you can slow down a defensive line and an aggressive defense. It's pinning its ears back. You mix in a draw. You mix in a screen. Good time to call that to set up a very makeable here third down. Rashad Green, the freshman, checks back in for the Knowles with this package on third and four as we come to the end of the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter. Oklahoma leads Florida State. So with Kirk Herbstreit, Aaron Andrews, and Tom Rinaldi, I'm Brett Musburger. Welcome back to the second quarter of the number one team in the nation, Oklahoma, visiting number five, Florida State in Tallahassee. This is a third down for the Knowles following an interception. They're down by four. DJ Manuel over the middle. He's got another first down. Diving to the 25 is Kenny Shaw, the sophomore from Orlando. Good job of getting rid of the football here quickly and finding the open man. This is a rhythm offense. E.J. Manuel's got to be able to get back there, especially on third down, because Oklahoma's going to get creative with their blitz package. I think E.J. Manuel, well-schooled there, knows he's got to get the football, make his read, process it, and put the ball right on the money, which he did. Rodney Smith goes off to the left. Kenny Shaw is one of the slot men. E.J. Manuel with a first and ten at the Sooners 25. Keeps it straight ahead. Picks up two or three yards on that. They have many designed runs in this game plan today for the quarterback. And, and that's one where you just show it. If it ends up breaking and you hit a big play, great. But it's another little wrinkle for those Oklahoma linebackers to be aware of. The safeties to be aware of. You have to appreciate and respect E.J. Manuel, every time he pulls that down, and it's going to force Oklahoma to keep an extra guy down, always aware of Manuel's ability to run the football. That opens up other things in the passing game. Jimbo Fisher, one of the better play callers in the country. He was the offensive coordinator when Nick Saban won a national championship at LSU. Manuel. Pockets clean. Got it. Touchdown. No incomplete. They wave it off. They wave it off, and now... There's a penalty flag comes flying. They wave it off. Kenny Shaw was the receiver. Right. He is down. Yeah. But this is a big, big hit. I hope Kenny Shaw is okay. Two Oklahoma defenders. Closed in on him that time. The linebacker Tom Wart and also the safety Javon Harris. Both of them hitting him at the same time. Harris right there. You'll see Wart coming from the left. Both of them coming up high, although it wasn't an illegal or dirty hit. At least it didn't appear to me. Because he was sandwiched, that's when the ball came free. Looks like this. Does he catch the football? Well, instant replay is taking a look at it. Let's see if he had actual possession before the contact. 
The ball was coming free as he was sandwiched and he's down in the end zone. The call on the field incomplete. And, and let, let's just hope Kenny Shaw is OK. The Oklahoma players right now taking a knee close to Kenny Shaw. Herbie, this is a personal foul. This is a point of emphasis. When you bring your helmets up that high near the helmet, they, they have got to call it. And, and they're going to call this penalty on Javon Harris, OK? You, ca you cannot deliver the blow. So it's going to be a personal foul after he makes contact down here. And you can see the uh, the players here, and the concern uh, with the Sooner defensive players. Well, that flag came in really late, you know, and I. It was thrown it was here the, by the side judge. Yeah, if that was on the initial hit, um, that, I'd be very surprised. But it came in very, very late. So while Kenny is being tended to, they'll bring the card out for him. We'll take a break. And we'll be right back to Tallahassee. The first concern here is Kenny Shaw still down in the end zone. That's that's the most important part of what's happening right now. The medical team is there and the cart has come out. It was a very violent though unintentional foul but the hit was delivered up high by one of the Oklahoma players and half the distance to the goal line is a ruling on the field. But again let me go back to the fact that Kenny Shaw this is this is the emphasis of this story right now is the young man being tended to down in the end zone Herbie. No oh, anytime you see a player down like this that, that's forget about the game forget about the situation. Uh, your thoughts are with him and hoping that he's going to be OK. That was a, a violent hit. No question. I mean, it was you, you mentioned it was high and. Now they end up uh, getting that first down but it's uh, uh, that's part of the game and, and uh, you know it's one of those things where you hope uh, he's, he's going to be able to be OK. I think the unfortunate part when he was impacted on which was his left side because he's backing into the end zone he got sandwiched on the other side there was no give right as the young man was was being contacted by two defensive players at at the goal line. And again it was ruled incomplete. I thought for a moment that he had it and was going to fall right into the end zone with it. it sure and looked the ball like had come free and was on the ground and therefore it's an incompletion. You know he, he has worked so hard. He's a sophomore out of Orlando. They say he's the best route runner on the team and I told you in high school living in Orlando he worked with Tom Shaw in high school. Who Tom Shaw of course is one of the great speed coaches in the country that works with a lot of the college players who head to the NFL as they prepare for the combine and he had the, the luxury of being in Orlando and working out with Tom Shaw and it really paid off for him because Jimbo Fisher saying with all of our receivers Kenny Shaw is by far one of our quickest and definitely our best route runner. So the young man will be taken to a hospital here in Tallahassee and just as soon as we get information we certainly will pass it on to you. I think somebody on the other side in a big ovation and now they're back on the field they're going after the penalty and this will bring up a second down it's an automatic first down it was half the distance on the personal foul call on the play and now we will have a second down coming up. Time you have that kind of hit and a 
a player goes down like that you know, both sides thoughts are of course with him and now you still have to be able to try to coaches get these players cranked back up and especially it's a pivotal point in the red zone here for the Knowles trying to take the lead here. Remember Burt Reed is also sidelined with that injured ankle. He tried it during pregame warm up. But he's been able, unable to go. So the Knowles and there's a penalty flag comes flying. Down at the four yard line. Rodney Smith. Pass, the receiver, but there's a shift. Illegal the shift offense, against the, the Knowles. The Let's check in down below now with Tom Rinaldi. Thanks, Brent. According to Florida State medical personnel, Kenny Shaw, they were unable to assess the state of his neck because he was knocked unconscious on the play. He regained consciousness fleetingly, but not to a point where they could assess his neck. He's on the way to the hospital where they'll make further assessment. Brent, obviously, our thoughts are with him. Absolutely, Tom, and uh, we'll keep everybody informed just as soon as we get information. Second down and 16 for E.J. Manuel. Who is back in the gun? Deflected, intercepted, picked off by Tom Wart, the linebacker. So the Sooners snuff the rally with an interception. Well, this is a great job of recognizing the screen by Tom Ward, the sophomore linebacker who's lined up right here. They're trying to get the ball right here to the tight end, Relifer, but watch how he's able to sit, sniff this out. He sees it right away, and how about the athletic ability to go up in the air and be able to come down with that interception? A pivotal time to come up with a turnover to get the ball back to Landry Jones in the Sooners' offense. That was a great play. Brennan Clay back in as the running back and Millard the fullback is split out to the left in this package. This is Millard now with an H back look. He will lead Clay shakes a tackle back to the line of scrimmage second and ten coming up. This is what you have to see if you're a Florida State fan. Mark Stoops has got to love to see it. Everett Dawkins at times able to slip through there and get some pressure on the running game. Oklahoma first drive they sustained things up front and Landry Jones and the Sooners were in sync. Last couple possessions we've seen some adjustments and Florida State now really attacking the, uh, the Oklahoma offensive line. Get the backfield set in with two and hand it off, but nothing doing. This will be Bjorn Werner, the young man from Berlin, making the stop for the Knowles. And Tom, I understand that we have one very good report regarding the injured receiver. Absolutely, Brett. The most positive kind of update you can have. Can he show up movement in all his extremities? We're going to take him to the hospital to x-ray his neck, but as of now, regaining consciousness, movement is extremities, Brent. Thank you so much for that, Tom. Third down and 10. I mentioned the young man from Berlin. That's in Berlin, Germany, and he is a very talented young defensive end. They close in on Landry Jones again, and the pass is dropped. Incomplete, and Oklahoma is forced to punt. And I might say here, Herbie, Mark Stoops has changed the tempo in this defense. Well, he's getting more aggressive, and he's mixing up the looks that much more. And the other thing, Glenn Brent, to just be quite honest, I think the Florida State defensive line is starting to be able to get off of blocks. They're playing with more aggression, and this crowd is back into this football game, and I think it's affecting Landry Jones and the communication of trying to get the play called. They're much slower right now than what we saw a year ago when they played the Knowles and Norman. Tress Ray is back to punt for the Sooners. He'll hit it about the 25, and Greg Reed back on the field, a great return man. Fair catch. Bob Wilson goes back after it and is out of bounds. Almost a disaster on that fair catch, but it'll be Florida State football when you come back. The Tallahassee Automobile Museum, home to three Batmobiles, including the original Batmobiles, used in Batman Returns and Batman Forever. My kids, if they're watching right now, are going to wonder if I got a chance to ride in that car. <laughs> Chris Thompson now <laughs> has checked in as a running back for the Knowles. Play fake. 
Manuel rolls pocket to the right, drops it off to the running back. And he's out to about the 17, and Tom Ward. And, uh, Herbie, let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. Talk about two quarterbacks for us. Well, Landry Jones got off to a great start, 5-for-5 five five on that opening drive, 80 yards and a touchdown since. The Sooners have really struggled. And for E.J. Manuel, right now the numbers aren't going to really stand out. The interception, obviously, he'd love to have back, although nothing resulted from that. But uh, E.J. Manuel still, I think, a balanced attack, making good decisions with the exception of that one uh, great play by Tom Ward. But they're pinned back in their own territory here for the first time. Let's see how they can react to this. Ty Jones is set behind Pryor. Pryor leads the way to fullback. Got the block on the edge. There's Pryor leading the way. And Jones does the rest. What a great lead block by the young man from Okeechobee. I love Lonnie Pryor because he's a former tailback that's more than willing to move to fullback. Holding offense. Oh, another penalty. And they got the receiver that time right in front of, his, of the tailback, Ty Jones. And Greg Dent, you know, they're, they're relying on the depth of the receivers because of Burt Reed being out and now Kenny Shaw being out. 15 off to the right there. Greg Dent just locks on to the corner. Hurst, that was a big gain for Florida State to get out of the deep in their own territory. But I'll tell you, Lonnie Pryor, I know it had to come back. He does a good job at, at uh, fullback. He's a former tailback, more than willing to block. He'll catch the ball to the, the backfield. And I like how Jimbo Fisher rotates these backs and keeps them fresh to be able to have some good acceleration in that backfield. Chris Thompson is the fresh running back, and he's jammed in the middle. That defensive front did not yield, and that cleaned it up for Tom Ward. Tom Ward has been very active as the middle linebacker here. Absolutely, and they, they always hear Bob Stoops and Brent Venables talk about gap integrity, meaning no busts, no seams, no easy runs. And you're right, Tom Ward, really all the linebackers. And I think the fact that Travis Lewis is back in the lineup, just providing leadership to go along with Tom Ward, I think that's very, very important to this linebacking crew. They're dialed in, especially against that run game. Tom Ward's best friend, of course, was the late Austin Box, who died tragically back in May. He has dedicated his season to the young man that he played middle linebacker with last year. Uh, this time, E.J. Manuel gets up toward that first down marker, dives for it. It'll depend on the spot. And there is Travis Lewis just on cue from what uh, Herbie told us. And uh, Herbie, you know, we talked about Austin Box. He started the last five games. And this team, the defense honors him with a player wearing number 12 in each of their games and tonight there's a the great Frank Alexander their defensive end and uh, he will honor him by wearing 12 tonight rather than his usual 84 and when, when the defense breaks the huddle they all break it with 12 Austin Box legacy lives on with his football team and they really uh, they really miss him. so here's a big hunter I mean big Sean Powell goes about 6 4 240 fair catch by Broyles very sure handed at the 32. So when you come back, Oklahoma will have the football. Folks, are you surprised we got a low scoring game? Well, we'll see what happens next. Now, the Sooners opened up this game with a 15 play drive, 80 yards, and a touchdown since the last couple of drives. Really, the Seminoles have made adjustments with Mark Stoops getting more aggressive and mixing up the looks, causing some confusion for Jones and that big offensive line. Dominic Whaley. In as a running back. They send him out as one of the receivers. He's got stills doubled over the top. Help from the safety. And it's incomplete. Great rotation that time by the safety as he came over the top on stills. Brent, I, I think he caught the football. It was it, it looked like there was a collision there, but still did he hang it. on yes, to this? Yeah, watch watch this effort. I think he little double move. He, he's able to get around Rose. Watch the safety come over. Oh my Joyner comes goodness. over and he's able to just get underneath of Joyner who is accelerating through him. Big time concentration and a huge play by Kenny Stills. Shaking up that colorful Mohawk of the Californian heads off to the sideline. What a great grab by Stills. I don't think there was a chance in the world when that safety rotated over that he could hang on to that. 38 yards. First down and 10. Whaley now pounds the middle to the 25. Yeah, let, let, let's appreciate this. And I know they're in a hurry, but Kenny Stills, who was suspended that first game, so important to this. And he, th there's the blow he took from Joyner there, the left elbow against the face. First of all, I think it was interference. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know what I mean? And he still play. managed to make that catch. 
Second down now. Jones drops it off underneath the Millard. Millard makes his way to the nine yard line. First down and goal. This is a staple in the Oklahoma offense. Fullback 33. Let's slip him out. See if the linebackers can stick with him. He's able to get away from 13 Bradham. And I'll tell you, Miller's the key to this offense. He can do so many different things. Quickly they come and stop is Dominique Whaley by Bjorn Werner. The young man who grew up playing soccer has only played football for a few years, came to a prep school in the United States, and now a penalty flag comes flying. Look at the power of Werner. Of Werner. He just goes right through the junior Lane, Lane Johnson. Just tremendous strength. Has pushed him right into the backfield. After the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense number 13. Contact to the player's helmet. The goal. That's Bradham. Bradham commits that foul. And settle down. Settle down. It's exactly what you cannot afford to do in a game like this. You cannot lose your cool. The emotions are flying high, but mental mistake, mental mistakes will cost you. Confusion on the Sooners side with their personnel grouping. Power eye, Miller the lead back. They'll run Whaley to the five yard line. It'll be second and goal, and Warner again. He's becoming the Dirk Nowitzki of defensive <laughs> ends here. Well, they may want to stay away from the right side because right now Lane Johnson is getting overwhelmed by the size and power of Warner. 6'4", about 275 pounds. Play action here is dangerous to the tight end for the Sooners. Love James Hannon, also the fullback, Miller. Power running game. And he can't get there. Down at the three-yard line, Joyner. The safety joined in on Whaley. And now, decision time for Oklahoma. Now, the left side of that line is getting a much better surge than the right side. So they try to get outside on this third down. Millard stays in. Whaley's the running back. It's the power eye. The way they hit the backfield. Josh Heupel stayed with that running game, and Xavier Rhodes, big time corner, and also Smith, the linebacker, come in and make the play. Wow. Great job of shooting the gap by Telvin Smith. The back, the backup middle linebacker is able to shoot the gap in a goal line defense. It's a great look at it. They're just pinching. Taking everybody occupying the linebacker, or occupying the offensive line. Lane Johnson, the right tackle, whiffed, and it opened up a nice seam that time for Kelvin Smith to be able to get through there. Jimmy Stevens, 21 yarder. It was 19 of 23 last season. Nails that one. And the Sooners are back with a seven point lead, their second seven point lead of the night. Florida State's turn when you come back 432 in the first half. All right, Mr. Herb Street. Time for tonight's Aflac trivia question. Florida State's only win versus Oklahoma came in the 1965 Gator Bowl. Who caught four touchdown passes that day for the Seminoles? Think about that, and right after that kickoff, we'll reveal it here. Think about that one now. Ball is on the tee. Oklahoma will kick it away. Greg Reed has now gone back with Joyner. I can hear the wheels spinning. Line drive kickoff. Reed's going to come out. 10, 20. 
Reed to the 25-yard line. All right, Mr. Armstrong, you want to guess? I, well, I mean, I'm thinking of the Lee Corso, Burt Reynolds era, but that's that, that was before. 65 was after. 65, 1965. Oh. He caught it about a dozen passes. Oh, my gosh. Oakland Raiders, Blitnikoff. There you go. There you go. Yes. The wide receiver yes. award is named yes. after him. Freddie Blitnikoff. Burn the nose. 1965. I knew 1965, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Number 25. One of the numbers retired here. Chris Thompson now checks on in as the Knowles running back. You might have guessed Sellers, another great receiver who yeah. came out of here. EJ keeping it run all the way. Designed run, cut back, jumps over one of his teammates. Got a first down and is upended at the 36-yard line. Fine run by EJ before Gabe Lynn took him down. Well, this is about the fifth time we've seen EJ Manuel run the football, and he knew this coming in. How about the little jump over the Spurlock, his guard, but a good effort, and again, just enough of a run from EJ Manuel to keep the safeties and the linebackers honest, and they have to be aware because of his athletic ability and speed that he at any time can pull that down and have the ability to get upfield and pick up 10 or 15 yards in a first down. Higgins, one of the wide outs, off to the left in the formation. Manuel gets some time, comes in underneath to his running back, Thompson. Robert, thank you very much. And uh, they did not give him a generous spot, so they still need a yard on this play. You know what? This is a physical, hard-hitting football game. Helmet came flying off of Ronell Lewis, a defensive end that time. We've had players go down on both teams, and uh, the most seriously injured was Kenny Shaw, who was taken to a hospital here. Stills was shaken up and probably tested him on that sideline for a concussion. And he hopefully will be back in. Now on third down, Manuel takes it right straight ahead here. Both, both defenses, I think, have settled into the game and, and are starting to become more aggressive, not just at the defensive line. Can you watch these Sooners linebackers? They are attacking. As soon as the ball is snapped, they're attacking down, downhill and reading their keys. And right now, they just both sides. Brent Venables with Oklahoma, Mark Stoops with uh, Florida State for now uh, are have the upper hand as the adjustments within this game continue on. Didn't get it by much, did they, folks? Thompson had to earn it. Back in that backfield, EJ will move up under center. Daniel's 6'5, 245 pounds. Could be an end around. Give it back now. Manuel looking to throw, takes off, maintains his balance to the 50, and he was lucky, Herbie, with David King closing in on him to get that much out of it. And now there's a sooner down. That is King who's on the ground. A little pitch back to Manuel trying to catch Oklahoma napping. They actually do a pretty good job of defending, defending that. King is able to chase him down from behind. But again, his mobility, just getting away from trouble instead of a big loss. <clears throat> excuse me, Brent. He's able to pick up three or four yards and continue to just move the stick or move the, uh, the ball down the field and avoid the devastating play. Well, coming up on the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report, Scott Van Pelt and Jesse Palmer will have all the day's big highlights. So Scott and Jesse have been watching all the games across the country and they'll fill us in on what's happening. I believe Miami leads Ohio State 17 6 right now. They scored quickly a couple of touchdowns, the Canes did. So here comes your second and seven for the Knowles, who will host Miami. Would have been later this season. Over the middle, incomplete. So it'll be third down now. Little. Was the intended target one of the tight ends? I think we, we can't say it enough. Just seeing Travis Lewis out on the field playing for Oklahoma. As Walker, Casey Walker, is checked out of the game. But Travis Lewis, his, he is such a leader. He's an extension of the defensive coaches, always getting people lined up. And, and, I, and I think the fear of missing him for the first four or five games was scary. But just his presence, being out on the field, definitely on the road. A big plus for this uh, Sooner defense. He makes all the calls. Manuel is 8 of 13 for 60 yards. Intercepted. 
Threw it away in the middle of the field. Picked off by Harris. Harris in a foot race. Cut off on the angle. Cuts back. And a brilliant return with that interception inside the five yard line. And the Sooners are in business with that turnover. Well, these are the mistakes they're going to cost any quarterback on third down. He throws it high, and there isn't a receiver Threw anywhere. Away in the middle of the field. I don't know if he Picked thought the receiver might have been making a cut Harris back to the field. middle of the field, or that was a, just a miscommunication. But that time, E.J. Manuel read one thing, and his receivers, and again, he's working with a lot of backup receivers. The receivers read another, and an easy interception by Javon Harris. Landry Jones brings the Sooners back out. Whaley and Millard are the running backs behind Jones. This time they're going to throw down there inside the five, incomplete. He threw it away. His receiver was covered. Remember last night, let's talk about the new play caller here for the Sooners a little bit. Josh Heupel is in the role. Kevin Wilson, now the head coach at Indiana. The last time I thought they were very conservative down here. They come up throwing on first down that time. And, and Josh Heupel will, will, I think, be very similar to Kevin Wilson. you got to take your chances when you think you can take advantage of a guy maybe out of position. But a lot of times, Oklahoma, a new part of this offense is down in this area, you've got to be able to run the football and push people off the line of scrimmage. They'll try to do just that with Whaley. Nothing doing. It will now be third down and goal. Last time down here, Knowles forced a field goal. Mark Stoops' defense up against it again after the turnover. So here's your third and goal. Millard is the lead fullback. Whaley checks the sideline, as does the quarterback. Toss play to him, trying to get the edge on the left by Millard. And there's a penalty flag. He's stopped by Vince Williams, but there is a penalty flag on the far side. And that's against Oklahoma. That's a holding penalty. Yeah, Jimbo holding thought he'd go on fourth down. He could have declined it and brought up fourth down and short, but I believe Jimbo was concerned that Oklahoma was going to go for the touchdown and they're going to back him up a little bit. And you know, Bob Stoops, he's not going to hesitate. He would take those chances. That's why Jimbo Fisher pushes him back. That time, Haber trying to reach block, just locked on to the linebacker there. Kenny Stills is back on the field. Stoops is very aware. Xavier Rhodes is locked up on the boundary with Stills, who's back in. Jones forced out of the pocket on the move. Fires it away, and it'll be fourth down and long. Pressure is being brought by Bjorn Warner. Warner, Brent, continues to just dominate Lanchett, Lan Johnson. They're going to have to start to chip. They're going to have to do something in the second half as an adjustment to slow him down because whether it's a run or a pass, as, ever, as much as everybody wants to talk about Brandon Jenkins, number 49, and his pass rush and 13 and a half sacks last year, tonight it's been Warner. Twenty-nine yarder from Jimmy Stevens. Again for the left hash. And again, he nails it. He is two for two here tonight. So the defense is keeping the Knowles in this, but the offense has to show up in the second half. Let's go down below now to Aaron Andrews. Coach, I heard you tell your offensive line you have to be better at the goal line. What adjustment do they need to make at the second half? We've allowed a, a guy or two to run through earlier on. You know, backer jumped the gap and penetrated. Here we're just, you know, got a good matchup. They're kind of haven't been able to knock them off the ball well enough down there on the two-yard line. All right, Coach, thanks. Over to Tom. 
Thanks very much, Eric. The defense playing really well. Jimbo, offensively, you're moving the ball. How do you remedy the mistakes in the turnover? We don't turn. We got to turn around in the middle of the field. We got a guy wide open. He turns out. We should have turned in, made the play, had a good throw. And the other time, we dropped a touchdown down there. We got a big hit, which was. I hope he's all right. But and the penalties. We just got to relax, relax, and make plays. Keep our poise. We're, this was a great job by our defense. It's 13 to three. We, we've shot ourselves in the foot as much as we can. We're 10 points out and got the ball coming out, so we're not in bad shape. Thanks very much, Jimbo. Thank Appreciate you. it, Brent. Sooners win 80 yards in 15 plays and look like boy, this offense is going to be in sync again. They were able to punch it in finally and get the touchdown with Landry Jones. It's a big play early. Kenny Shaw down. Turns out he is okay, which is great news. Tom Warren has a big interception here to set things up for Oklahoma. And really, Florida State has self-destructed with the two turnovers. They feel like they can execute here in the second half. You're watching the ACC on ESPN from Tallahassee, and I would be remiss in not following up on that ACC mention by saying that there's a whole lot of talk. First, let's watch this kickoff return, this important drive coming up, and the Knowles will start as Joyner gets to the 22. And the Pacific Life game summary. Herbie, take a quick look at this. As I said, the Florida State, the two turnovers, they've had their opportunities. They've moved the football, but you heard Jimbo Fisher walking off with Tom Rinaldi talking about how, hey, we've got to settle down. We've got to settle down to be able to play in this scene. But I've been very impressed by Florida State's defense. Three times the Sooners have been inside the red zone. They've forced two field goals and allowed the touchdown on that opening drive. That's a big unsportsmanlike conduct foul on number 89. And that'll move this ball. Is that Hayward, Herbie, hey, out uh, to the 37? Yeah, the tight end, Austin Hayward, a big hit, but he came in high, which you just can't do. And you're talking about trying to create some momentum to start the second half. Always very, very important to start off the second half with some momentum, and Florida State just got it. And, and they just lost whoa, it. Whoa, Lonnie Pryor <laughs> is cut off. Walker, one of the defenders there. Florida State rushed for 55 yards. And Oklahoma 59 in the first half. Well, Walker's the nose guard, and this is what you need to be able to get a big push up front. And you know he's just overpowering the the center Brian Stork, who last week played guard. He's undersized. They say he's quicker, and that's why they want him at center. The problem is he's going up against Casey Walker at about 310 pounds with quickness, and he slipped right by him there for a big loss. Florida State shorthanded at wide receiver, second down and 16. EJ snaps it off to the side, but not much doing. That's Jared Higgins, young receiver, and Higgins couldn't get much out of it as we check in with Aaron. Brent, Oklahoma's D-line shorthanded right now. Casey Walker, defensive tackle, is out with a left ankle injury. He's over here on the sidelines. And then David King, defensive end, he's cramping right now, Brent. So both of these guys trying to get back in. All right, so we'll follow that. Third down and 19. What do you think, screen or draw? Something safe. Don't make a mistake. That was safe, but it forces <laughs> them to punt. Well, they don't take advantage of the 15 yards tacked on in the kickoff. Great defense by the Sooners. And, you know, we talk about adjustments and schemes, but right now they're just outplaying Florida State right there up front. And no question. And here's the big punter. But Jimbo Fisher could not afford another turnover down here. No. Let Oklahoma play it with a short field. Ryan Broyles, very dangerous as a punt return man. Jimbo talking to his quarterback down on the sideline. 6'4, 240 pounds. Drives it, but it's low for Broyles. And he's going to let this one because there's good coverage on it. It'll be down right around the 30 yard line. So when you come back, it'll be. The Sooners' first possession of the second half, up by 10. Well, as you look down, our college football scene is under dramatic change, and we'll know more next week. First now, first down and 10. Landry Jones and the Sooners back in the gun. Bobbles a snap. And down on it right there. But from uh, earlier reports, both Syracuse and Pittsburgh have applied for admission to the ACC. And of course, that would swell that conference and the Board of Regents of both Oklahoma 
and Texas are due to meet on Monday. There have been stories that Oklahoma has pointed to the Pac-12. Texas might even want to join the ACC. We shall see as all those stories unfold next week. Sets the screen pass, and that's James Hanna, the tight end. And there's a penalty flag comes flying. And if this is going to be personal foul on Florida State, you got to be kidding me. Dead ball, personal foul. Is that what we're talking about here? After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on a defense number 13. Wow. Talking about poise. Jimbo Fisher, Mark Stoops, act like you've been there. Go out there and play with poise. The emotions are starting to fly high defensively for Florida State, and Bradham loses his cool. I mean, they, they had him set up at a third and long, and now it's an automatic first down. He Watch came in the late. head. Just grinded him on it. You can't lose your cool like that. The ball out at the 45-yard line. First down and 10 for the Sooners. Play on the inside. Approaches midfield. Jenkins makes a stop for the Knowles. You know, all this talk this week about would Florida State be able to get lined up right? Remember last year when they played Oklahoma? They couldn't even get lined up right because the tempo got the best of them. Well, now in Tallahassee, a year older, this defense is not only getting lined up right, they're beating the blocks up front and getting off them and making big plays. Ever since that first drive, they've made the adjustments and are playing a lot hungrier. Finch, one of the slot receivers for Oklahoma, the running back. They drop it off the other side, and it'll be third down and long. Clay was running a route, and Bradham, who was guilty of that foul, makes the play defensively. And Mark Stoops continues to mix up looks. You know, Oklahoma tries to be the aggressor with this up-tempo offense. They try to confuse you. And Mark Stoops is trying to mix up the looks and confuse Oklahoma. in the gun third and ten pressure sack took down by Bjorn Werner the young man from Berlin Germany is having a huge night at defensive end for the Knowles Brent, they, he has been to the offense is right and dominating Lane Johnson this time he's just gonna watch how quick he gets off the snap are you kidding me Donald Stevenson never had a chance. Warner known for his power in tonight against Oklahoma, using that power and also incredible quickness to overwhelm the Sooners up front. Tressway gets it off and Reed is back again. Let's it go and it's a beautiful punt. Tressway, the junior out of Tulsa, buries the Seminoles. So when you come back, we'll see what E.J. Manuel and the Knowles can come up with offensively. Well, we welcome you back to Tallahassee, and uh, there is the coaches' trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. And both these teams would like to play for it in New Orleans come next January 9th. E.J. Manuel's in trouble, drops it off beautifully under pressure back there by the two-yard line. And Brent Aaron Colvin came on a blitz. It was a little bit delayed, and it caught Brian Stork off, off guard a bit. And, and Brent Venables, much like Mark Stoops, mixing up his looks. Look at this. Look at the safety coming in late. See how the center's not able to come over and pick him up. Great job of improvising and avoiding disaster that time by E.J. Manuel to find his check down. The Knowles are searching for a wide receiver. Burt Reed, ankle injury. Kenny Shaw. Taken out on a stretcher in the first half. They're without their two aces. But he throws for a first down to Higgins. 
picks up one of the youngsters and it's first and ten. Tom Rinaldi, what is the latest on Kenny Shaw? Very good news from the Florida State medical staff. Right on Kenny Shaw, of course, suffered that frightening hit on the goal line, knocking him unconscious in the second quarter. CT scans at a nearby hospital, negative of his head and neck, the best kind of news, feeling in, in all of his extremities, should be fine, according to team doctors. Wonderful news about Kenny Shaw, Brent. Indeed. Great. That's great. First down and 10 now, and Higgins, a sophomore from Lakeland, makes a big play. So they're searching for wide receivers. They could also use a running back besides the quarterback here. And the quarterback comes up with a nice play to the 35 yard line and that's for shot green another of the freshmen from Albany Georgia. See I think they have some receivers with athletic ability and speed and this true freshman is a blazer and going to be a superstar here but it's the way they aren't on quite on the same page the way the way Burt Reed and Kenny Shaw might be the miscommunication we saw in the first half with the interception these guys have ability it's just making sure they're dialed into the defenses that they're seeing and reading and making sure they're seeing the same thing that E.J. Manuel is. So a freshman and a sophomore are trying to replace a sophomore and a senior and that is one thing he can do brilliantly running all the way for the first down and Tony Jefferson making the stop for the center. One thing about running that football is you're going to take some hits and Travis Lewis got in there had a lot of acceleration and really the backup quarterback Clint Trickett and when you're going to run E.J. Manuel, he's going to take some hits and he's going to take a pounding. So as much as it can help you, and obviously he's been productive running the ball, you got to remember to get, if he gets a chance to get down, Brent, you got to get down. Manuel's going to throw on first down. Snaps it off beautifully to Green, who is lit up at the 45-yard line. He Javon took a Harris came up again. Yeah, he's, he's gotten he's been taking some hits the, the play where he ran the previous play Travis Lewis lowered a boom on him and this time it's Harris taking out Rashad Green but he's able to hold on to the football. Now the previous play he took a shot from Travis Lewis that I think he maybe didn't feel until he tried to throw the ball there. Now Devontae Freeman has come in as the running back and he has the first he's behind prior. Here's the freshman's first carry of the game. And they run him up behind the left side of that offensive line. Datko and Fakaru, but it looks like E.J. Manuel's hurt. That's what we, we just talked about, how you're going to run with him, and, and that's a great play. And against Oklahoma's defense, you make them be aware of it. Opens up the passing game. But Lewis, Travis Lewis will come from the left, hits him right there on the left side, and he's kind of been holding the left side. And it might have been really when he came down. Absolutely. That's part of the risk of, of using that athletic ability. And Clint Trickett, the freshman, who's looked pretty good in the first couple games. He's the son of the offensive line coach here, the backup quarterback. Tripp still flips it out, but nothing doing for Devontae Devante Freeman. Ronell Lewis read it right away. And he, Brent, he is really feeling this. I mean, I. We, we talked about this before the game started. Clint Trickett, offensive line coach. He's a coach's son. He knows how to run the system. But let's keep a close eye with Tom Rinaldi to see how serious this might be with E.J. Manuel. On the punt for Florida State, number 45, Sean Powell. So Powell back, and Broyles goes deep Brian for the Broyles Sooners. Deep to receive. Low line drive punt. Royal scoops it up at the eight. Steps out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Royals on the return. A fierce Oklahoma defense here tonight in Tallahassee. Seminole quarterback E.J. Manuel is going back to the Knowles locker room to receive medical attention, and that means that redshirt freshman Clint Trickett, who's been warming up. Will be coming in. He just had a brief conversation with Jimbo. He's up now taking some snaps. But this is a punishing Oklahoma defense here tonight. Dominic Whaley is in as the Sooners running back. And Miller comes over, and here comes Whaley. 
And now it looks like Oklahoma is going to try to hand out some punishment with the offensive line on a power run here, Herbie. Well, again, once again, Werner is in on the play. That time, actually, the right tackle, Lane Johnson, doing a better job of moving him, at least laterally, to try to give Whaley a little bit of room to work with. Coming back to the left side with him for the first down. Knowles trying to tackle the football. Whaley would have none of it. Now it looks like maybe Jay Norvell and Josh Heupel, the co-offensive coordinators, maybe this time the offense went to the sideline. They may have said, hey, boys, let's try to get aggressive up front and try to run the football. These first two carries kind of getting a little bit more aggressive and asserting themselves. This time sets himself, throws the double coverage, intercepted. Picked off at the 20-yard line by LaMarcus Joyner. Landry Jones a little greedy on that play, but in effect it is good as a big punt. Brent, they tried to catch him napping with an out and up. But right here, Joyner sees it the entire way and just is kind of coasting. Now, he's a former corner, and he has great closing speed, and that time he shows the ball skills to go along with the speed. Able to locate the football and hold on to it for that interception. So here comes Trickett off the bench, replacing the injured E.J. Manuel. 421 left after the joiner interception. They'll give him Ty Jones, the 210-pound senior from Tampa. He'll be the eye back, and he'll be featured here as Trickett takes his first snap from Brian Stork. And they're going to have him put it up on first down. Goes deep, covered, incomplete. And there's the penalty flag. He draws an interference call on first down. How about that play, How about Irving? the call? How about the call by Jimbo Fisher? What are we going to do with our freshman quarterback, coach's son? We're going to throw a pass, a fade, and a deep ball. Let's go right after one of your top corners in Fleming. Higgins back in as one of the receivers for Trickett. Yeah, I, I'd like to take, if we can, take another peek at that because I know the Oklahoma bench is pretty frustrated with that call. And it, I don't know if there was a whole lot of contact on that sideline, but it looks like they're going to call it. On the defense, yards from the previous spot. You love the call. The, well, the ball's in the air. That's the call right there. Towards the end of it, it's not pass interference, but the elbow to the jaw on Green is what was called. That's a great call downstairs by the officials. But I, how about Jimbo Fisher? First, first play for the young guy. Welcome into the game. Now they give him Thompson as a running back. Mm. Not much doing on that with big Ronell Lewis rolling in. Number 56. Well, you have a polling guard on the backside and the acceleration of Lewis getting upfield. You know, Lewis moved from outside linebacker to defensive end, and Brent Venables telling us this week he's just now really settling into understanding the technique of that position. And that time he sniffed that out quickly, got upfield, and I don't think they fear trick it running the football in that zone read option play, obviously, the way they do EJ Manuel. They're locking in on those running backs. Put him down second and 15. And that is complete to Haggins. Reaching for the first down, just shy of it by a little over a yard. So here's the young man. His daddy, too, is on the coaching staff. Brent, you, you've been talking about which one of these receivers might step up, and we've seen a couple of them. Hagens has been able to do that, and Rashad Green. That time, Hagens finding the soft spot, soft spot in the zone. But I'm very impressed. When we watched Clint Trickett in practice on Thursday, you know, he got off to a good start against inferior opponents, but he has tremendous poise for a young quarterback who hasn't played a lot. And there's his father legendary offensive line coach for many years with Rich Rodriguez in Morgantown with the Mountaineers. But a coach's son showing a lot of poise here stepping into this game in the third quarter. Third down. Play action. Trickett going to throw for the first down. It is going to be close. Relaford. 
It'll depend on the spot. They're marking it as a first down. Brent, this gives you an idea. They're, they're trying to squeeze the safeties up, and he wants to go downfield. The problem is Oklahoma stays. So they're trying to catch him off guard on third and short. Oklahoma stays with it. A great job of looking off of the receiver that he wanted to go to, showing the poise and checking it down for that first down. So Jimbo Fisher gambling with his backup quarterback here, and now the freshman running back, Devontae Freeman from Miami. Timeout is going to be used. Florida State burns a timeout. And let's check in down below with Tom Rinaldi. Thanks very much, Brent. When E.J. Manuel came over to the sideline, trainers looking at that left shoulder, asking him to raise his arm up, was not able to raise it parallel to the ground. As a result, they brought him back to get the pads off him, get a better look at the shoulder, and examine it that way. That's why they brought him off the field. As soon as we know more, we'll get it to you, Brent. Look to me on the hit. Heard you know, like no the doubt. shoulder went into the ground a little bit, right? You know, and, and I just, I just talked look about when you run him, you, you take a risk of maybe taking a big hit. And Travis Lewis to hit and then to pounding into the ground is where I think he really felt that. He tried to get up after that play and try to make a pass attempt the next play. And that's when I think he really started to feel the pain set in. But, hey, how about so far? This young freshman comes into this game, and we'll see how he's able to manage the game the rest of the way. But so far, looking pretty comfortable for the Seminoles in this offense. Trickett gets time. Higgins again. A brilliant catch by Jared. Oklahoma had two safeties high and deep. So you got to try to attack the middle of the defense. Hagens is really starting to settle in. What concentration there. But a great throw by Trickett to lead him right into the hole in the middle of that defense and pick up a huge gain for the Seminoles. And I said to Jimbo, must have been easy recruiting him with Odell on your staff. And he said, you'd be surprised. It wasn't as easy as you might think. <laughs> the young man had a lot of offers. And here is Jared. 6-1 only 191 pounds against that heavy hitting secondary and now they come back with the other freshman Freeman and he ran right up in to his lineman Corey Nelson is there number eight now he has the most burst if you get into an open field Freeman is the one who can take off for the nose but getting there that's the battle against this Sooner defense as a true freshman he has that low center gravity great balance tough to bring down but I'll tell you what this guy comes in off the bench let's give a Let's recognize the offensive line and the play calling. And right now, Oklahoma's brought some pressure, but for the most part, Trickett has been able to execute this offense without a lot of pressure on him. Christian Green checks in as one of the Knowles receivers. He's a redshirt freshman. Gonna get hit on the delivery. Got it from the blind side from Tony Jefferson. So finally, Brent Venables dials up pressure on the backup and they got there well of course just as you say the offensive line doing a pretty good job Venables does come with a blitz he brings both linebackers from the outside and Tony Jefferson comes untouched that's why you don't use freshman at running back folks Freeman oh my wait till the coaches see that <laughs> didn't even try to take him on okay. that's the that is why running backs stay in the game and that's why they come off you've got to blitz protect Chris Thompson now in as a running back. Incomplete. Crowd won an interference on Fleming. Well, they've got the leg to go for the field goal here. There's no doubt about that. Hopkins can make it as we saw earlier from well within this range. Made a 53 yarder back in the first quarter. He's now hit 12 straight. Look at the shoes, folks. This is the man with the golden toe. 46 yards on the attempt. A 46 yarder. High snap. Now it curls. And he's got another one. Automatic. Whoa. I wanted to show you some statistics as you compare 
the two in Oklahoma history now. You great Sam Bradford pass for 8,400 yards. But look at this. Landry Jones is about to go by him. Probably with the next completion, he will have the most career passing yards of any quarterback in Oklahoma history. Amazing. There's Landry engaged to a basketball player back in Norman. I think her name is Whitney Hand. I apologize, but I think she's a fine player and they were engaged this summer. I'm sure she's back at school watching. Inside of a minute here in the third quarter. Irons and Clay are back. The Knowles are within seven. And there's a beautiful kickoff. So again, no return with the young man, Dustin Hopkins. And it'll come out on the 20-yard uh, line. A record crowd tonight. 84,000 plus. The largest crowd, Herbie, in Florida State history. As you look down now, 84, 392. No mark was set against the Canes. They're down by seven. Snaps it off to Stills and Stills with great speed. He's a 4-3 man. Finally down, and he made one of the catches of the year. In the first half, I didn't think there was a chance in the world that he held on to that football. He did. He was shaken up, went to the sideline, and he's come back. Florida State's got to take away these easy underneath throws by Landry Jones. Now they run the toss play with Clay. Clay about a yard short of a first down against that defense. They have a sooner down here. Looks like he's slow to get up. That's Broyles. I believe that's Ryan Broyles, number 85, who's down. He has been rather quiet since the opening part of the game. He caught four passes early for 24 yards, and since then he's been quiet. Jones now, after hitting his first six of the game, is 12 of 18 overall. This whole offense has been quiet since that opening drive. Twice inside the five yard line. I was say, really, the, really the first time this offense and the masterminds behind it have been tested without Kevin Wilson, who's now, as you said earlier, the head coach at Indiana. Millard in as the fullback for Jones. Brennan Clay, the running back. Goes in motion. They're going to screen quickly to him, and the Knowles would have none of it. Christian Jones out of Winter Park, Florida. I think the motion that time actually drew the attention, and even though Oklahoma can run, but it's tough to get to the perimeter against the Seminole defense with the speed that they have. Can the Knowles come back with a backup quarterback in the fourth quarter? We'll find out. We start the fourth quarter. 13-6. Oklahoma leads it by seven. Landry Jones of the Sooners. And almost intercepted by Michael Harris. Florida State that time in press man coverage. Again, trying to disrupt on third and short. Take away the cushion. Good job there by the defensive backs. Taking away that cushion. Disrupting the rhythm and timing between Landry Jones and his receivers. They were expecting that short, quick pass, and they took it away. Now, Trust Way has hit two 51-yard punts here tonight. Greg Reed is back deep. And Way hangs one up in the air using that sideline again. And this one's going to roll dead at the nine-yard line. What a job by Trust Way. As we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary here tonight before the largest crowd in the history of Florida State. Only touchdown of the game scored in the first quarter on the opening drive by the Sooners. Sooners have now 195 yards to Florida State's 177. 
And if you watched the Michigan Notre Dame game and you saw some fireworks at the end so far we have not seen many fireworks which means every possession and every snap in a one possession game matters especially with Florida State deep in their own territory like this with a backup quarterback Clint Trickett Thompson's is running back play action they're going to throw him again on first down complete to the 30 yard line a brilliant pass to Relaford and Jimbo Fisher comes up throwing again this time for 20 yards on first down and Fleming is shaken up as a quarterback when your coach as a backup quarterback shows the confidence to throw the football and play action on first and 10 that makes you feel like you're going to be able to sit in there and make a throw great job of protecting him giving him enough time to be able to make it a ch have a chance to evaluate the defense puts the ball right on the money to the big tight end he's feeling it right now look at him why not he's four of six for yeah. 59 yards he's the son of the offensive line coach here at Florida State Rick Trickett and his daddy apparently had a tear in his eye when the young man threw a touchdown pass on his first play ever he threw a touchdown pass to Rashad Green. It was the first snap for either. Now he's got the Knowles down by a touchdown. There is Rick, who's done an outstanding job with the O-line here at Tallahassee. And one of his weapons is the nephew of Coach Odell Haggins, who works with the defense here with the Seminoles, number 12. And he's had a big night here. Receiving, he has four catches for 45. So some youngsters taking charge. Play action again, trouble coming. Frank Alexander's there. Yeah, Frank Alexander gets in there. And again, there, th one thing about Brent Venables, you might be able to throw on first and 10, but the next time you get in that position, they're going to have to bring pressure. They brought the safety Coleman off to the right, and Frank, Ale Frank Alexander that time just flat out beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. You know, we're kidding about, you know, this offensive line, and you think about Rick Trickett, maybe the toughest offensive line coach in the country. Probably thinking you better block for my son while he's out there. Rodney Smith is off to the right. Second down and long for Trickett. Fires in underneath. And he hit Greg Dent. And <laughs> Dent is a sophomore from Bell Glade, Florida. There is that offensive line and the number of starts. Stork was switched back to center this week. And Farren Krug, who was an outstanding JC offensive lineman a year ago, played center for a couple of games, and tonight they've moved him back to left guard. Jones in as the running back alongside Trickett. Be careful here. Third down. Pressure. Got one on one. Throws for it. Incomplete. Out of bounds. That was Dent working the near side. Nice safe call here where the quarterback just, he doesn't even have to make a read. He's just going to get back, put the ball up in the air, and hope that Dent can be able to make a play one on one against Gabe Lynn. Gabe Lynn never even sees the football. The ball was just thrown a little bit too far to the outside. It's a tremendous effort that time by Dent to try to get his foot down, but clearly out of bounds. Royals, okay, he's in to return this punt. Sean Powell booms one. Royals catches it at the five yard line and he's surrounded. Out of bounds at about the nine. This is a great attacking spot and there's a penalty flag. Great attacking spot, Herbie, for the Knowles defense. Absolutely. And they, they may push him back even further. Looked like a late call that came in and they threw it right at Demontre Hurst. Possible push in the back or a holding call. During a return, personal foul. Legal block below the waist. Receiving team in the set. the distance of the goal. First down. Time out. Stoops can't be happy about this penalty. Even before the penalty, folks, it was a 69-yard punt. Come on back. E.J. Manuel Herbie has returned from the locker room, and now it is the Sooners who are backed up. They're going to run Whaley, and he is stoned by Bradham. Second down coming up. 
They are backed in, I think, the noisiest part of this stadium. The Seminoles have pin are pinning their ears back right now. Landry Jones right now, of course, the experienced, the veteran, needs to avoid the turnover. But Bob Stoops, still an aggressive guy, sometimes takes some chances with one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Remember, he's got stills. Stays conservative, and they run it out to about the six-yard line. So this will be third down, and not an easy third down for the Sooners either. Both Florida State defensive ends, Werner and Jenkins, have the ability to get off the ball in a hurry if Oklahoma decides to throw the football. Lantry Jones is going to have to get the football out of his hands in a hurry. Stills is slotted to the right. On third down, Landry fires middle, incomplete, and the Sooners are forced to punt. E.J. Manuel reappears, and the Knowles force a three and out. I think Kenny Stills may have been surprised the football was coming to him as quickly as it did, but it just a great play that time by Terrence Parks to come over and get a finger on the ball and knock it away. Now Tressway, who has punted brilliantly, is backed up toward the back of his end zone with Greg Reed attempting to give the nose some field position. Movement by flag. Oklahoma. Line judge saw it. Aaron Colvin, 14 on the edge. This shrinks the angle, Herbie, for the Rushman. Got to think that this is where Greg Reed, one of the most electrifying playmakers in all of college football, has a chance to make something happen. Another penalty. On the snap, the defense forced a false start. Bob trying to get to his officials' attention. He's all the way out at the 10 yard line. Brent, you've been doing games a long time. I, I, I've been doing games as well. This place has not been this loud since Chris Wanky was a quarterback here. It's been about 10 years since this place rocked like this. Agreed. Here we go now. Press Ray. Very close to the end line. Reed awaits it. And because of where he was in the pressure, that's his poorest punt of the evening. E.J. Manuel has his helmet on and has walked onto the field. Let's quickly check in with Tom. They're going to take him back out. He now is moving back to the sideline. Let's check in with Tom Rinaldi. Brent, after examining him, trainers uh, determined a bruised left shoulder for E.J. Manuel. He came out, up, warming up, throwing the ball, but obviously we see Trickett go back in. But E.J. Manuel warming up as if to return and appears to be ready if needed. He wanted to go in. He was out on the field, and yeah. the coaches sent him back. The competitive spirit of E.J. Manuel wanted to get back into this game. Let's see what Clint Trickett can do. He's played pretty well up to this point. Chris Thompson is his running back. Motions out. Straight back on first down. And swallowed at the 40-yard line for a loss on the play. Let's check in with Robert Flores. Robert, thank you. And here it is, second down and 12 for backup quarterback Clint Trickett. Drops off the screen. There's a penalty flag thrown by the umpire. The play on the field results in a first down, but the umpire threw the penalty flag in that pit area holding. holding. On the offense. 
The veteran David Spurlock, good time to be able to call this. You know, one thing about Trickett being in for EJ Manuel, and you saw it on first and ten. When things break down, you lose Manuel's ability to create. So you've got to be able to dial up more plays like that to screen to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Rick Trickett wants to know who was that call on. Higgins trots in as one of the receivers. Second down and a bunch. Just trying to make third down manageable if they can. And remember, they have a great weapon in the field goal kicker, but they need more than that here in the fourth quarter. Smacked. Too late developing, and Tom Ward, who's had a big night defensively, the middle linebacker for the Sooners, roars in on it. You know, the, the trick play and, and trying to go with plays that, that are are unique as far as a play call. I don't know if this is the time for that because of the timing of a lot of these guys are backup players. It's one thing to execute it in practice with the second team. It's another thing when Oklahoma and Tom Ward are locking in on you. This drive started at the Oklahoma 38. Now they're all the way back at their own 44. The third and a bunch. Trickett goes deep. Great grab. Breaking free. 15, 10, green. Touchdown. How about the freshman from Albany, Georgia? Rashad Green. 56 yards on a third and 28. <laughs> What the heck? Third down and long? We saw some of this last last week. Third and 28, a mile <laughs> against this defense. But we saw this with Denard Robinson last week. Throw it up and hope your receiver makes a play. That's exactly what the freshman Green did for Trickett. Wait till you see the safety, Javon Harris. When we come back, we'll show you the angle that he took to try to position himself to knock them all the way. Just another... Saturday night for college football. Come on back, you all. We welcome you back and a very upset Oklahoma defense here and having surrendered a 56 yard touchdown pass on third and 28. And Trickett off the bench has led the Knowles to a field goal, a punt, and now a touchdown in his three drives. And now Dustin Hopkins with that long leg will kick it off. Franks from the goal line. Short of the 20-yard line. Right on third and 28. Watch the safety right here, number 30. Watch how slow he is to break on the football and then the angle that he took. Javon Harris was slow to react, and then when he did react, he didn't go up and knock the ball away. Third and 28, just get up and knock the ball down. He's slow to react, and the corner that time, Fleming didn't do anything to help him out. Just really poor play that time by the Oklahoma secondary, and Rick Trick gets pretty fired up. It's rare to see a smile from him in the middle of a football game, but happy for his son. Play is the running back behind Jones and the Sooners. He'll try to come to the left. Picks his way before Harris brings him down. Number one for the Knowles. 9-18 left in regulation. We're deadlocked at 13. You know, Brett, the all tempo, tempo, tempo. Oh, is Florida State going to be ready for the tempo? After that first drive, I don't really sense that tempo is a concern at all. I mean, Florida State's lined up. Oklahoma's not going nearly as fast as they typically do. The Knowles are in position and ready to play ball. Backfield is empty. And caught but short of that first down. And that was Kenny Stills with that reception. You know, Herbie, if you go back to the last couple of years, talking about Oklahoma, they've been a different team on the road. Missouri and Texas A&M beat them. As they come back here and pick up a first down with Clay, the year before they lost at Miami and Nebraska, invincible in Norman, yeah. but not invincible on the road. Well, communication is so important 
to this tempo where Jones and the offense looks up, they look over and get the call. Jones communicates things to the offensive line, but then they have to make adjustments and calls up front and be on the same page within the hostility of these stadiums that they're on the road facing. On the pistol formation. Royals wrestling it away, makes the catch. And Broyles moves the chains for the Sooners here. Oklahoma has had to work for everything underneath. They usually make a living on these underneath throws. Ball was behind Broyles. He does a good job of adjusting and making the catch. Now they come back to the left side in a brilliant tackle by Michael Harris, the senior from Miami. Great job here of recognizing the play. They have trips off to the field. Mike Harris, as soon as he sees the receiver to the outside, cards starting to come out to block. He knows the inside receiver, Broyles, is coming out on a swing pass, and he's got to be able to break in front of the potential block. Time that up perfectly. Second and 12. Almost intercepted on the deflection. That linebacker Christian Jones was sitting there, and Oklahoma is very lucky that he didn't catch it. It is so rare to see Landry Jones hurry. He is he is hesitant, he is hurrying, and it has a lot to do again with the way they're mixing up their looks within this defense. They're matching up on the underneath and the easy throws. The crowd staying right in it as loud as they can with the Sooners on the field. Hit on the release, but he still gets it off for a first and ten, and he finds Ryan Broyles, the young man from Norman, Oklahoma. Another big catch for him. Well, this is as big as it gets on third down. And Landry Jones shows the toughness to sit in the pocket. He finds his man breaking free, and he earned it that time. 22 yards, pump fake by Jones. Gonna go deep down the far side. Got a man open in the end zone. Stills grabs a touchdown. Kenny Stills, what a pair of hands. The importance of catching a football with your hands. A little pump fake, and it got Greg Reed to bite on it, and look how strong Kenny Stills hands are to be able to secure that football. It's underthrown a little bit late. Look how strong he is to secure it and bring it down for a touchdown. Now Stevens on the field. Seven catches for 125 yards for Stills, including that unbelievable grab in the first half. Stevens splits the uprights. Two big plays, 22 yards to Broyles, 37 yards to Stills, and Bobby Stoops is happy again. We welcome you back, and there's the young man who put the Sooners ahead. He's one of the three big players on this team from California. Landry Jones just saying to Kenny Stills, big plays in big games. And that's what those two did coming down sure the stretch. Did. But now it is the Knowles' turn looking for a big play. Greg Reed is going to come out. And Reed out close to the 20 yard line. Greg, speaking of, of Greg Reed, he's going to try to match up this time with Stills, who's not going to get fancy. He's going to go down the sidelines. But I want, really want you to focus on Greg Reed. Greg Reed, who's a great corner, see how he steps up? Then he hesitates right there. And I don't think he anticipated Stills getting behind him because he has such confidence in his ability to stay with receivers. But Kenny Stills is a rare exception. Gets behind him, adjusts back to the ball, and has the hands to be able to hold on to that football. And Stills a 4-3 guy. Yeah, you better respect that speed. First down and 10. Trickett's still in the game, and why not? Three drives, a field goal, and a touchdown. A one-hopper incomplete, and it'll be second down and 10 for the Knowles. 
So a reminder that right after this game, stay tuned on these ABC stations for your late local news, or you can switch over to Sports Center for post-game analysis and all the scores and highlights from around the country. West Virginia hanging on against the game Maryland team in the fourth quarter, and now the Mountaineers will go home and host LSU in Morgantown next Saturday. Second down and ten. Trickett on that slant and Rodney Smith in a foot race and Rodney's a veteran a junior from Miami and he has some veteran skill at that wide receiver spot they're coming up with different to get the ball out of the hands of Trickett as quickly as they can and whether it's a fade down the field different types of screens this time as you said they get it to Smith who showed some pretty good acceleration coming around the field and getting to the corner being able to pick up some big yards it's a big drive here, obviously, with, for Florida State. Now down a touchdown, under six and a half minutes to go, and just because of the momentum of the game switched so drastically after that touchdown by the Sooners. Blitz. Target down at the 33-yard line. Rennell Lewis wraps him up, but there was blitz pressure coming from the right. They've been bringing Aaron Colvin a lot, and they brought him to the offense, his left, along with Tony Jefferson. And this is what you lose with Trickett. He doesn't have the mobility. I want you to also remember he's playing at about 180 pounds up there, out there against this Oklahoma defense. When he takes off to run with it, it's survival mode. <laughs> he's, not worried, he's not worried about yards. Second and 13. Has time deflected and a diving interception at the 46 yard line is Javon Harris, the young man who made the mistake on the big touchdown pass to Green. He comes back and comes up with a big turnover. And Brent, that's big for Harris. He, he struggled a couple times against Tulsa in week one, sees the tip, and how about the effort here and the athletic ability to adjust back to the football and secure that interception? Five and a half minutes remaining. Number one in a dark fight with the Florida State Seminoles. 2013, Oklahoma leads Florida State after the second interception of the night by Javon Harris. Now Stoops and the Sooners will see what they can do against the clock here. They're up against a backup quarterback. 5-28. Remaining OU with all three of their timeouts. They lead it by seven. The pressure is on the other side, down by seven. And Stoops would like to knock some time off this clock and finish this with a kick, either an extra point or a field goal if he can here. Give himself a little daylight. Second down and seven. Whaley is the Oklahoma running back. Found daylight for a first down to the 38 yard line. Harris makes the stop. Uh, he follows a double team right off to the right down. side here. Hayburn and Evans do a nice job. Lane Johnson gets, does a good job as well, along with Donald Stevenson. That time when it, they were expecting run, still over, able to open up a huge hole, and Whaley is able to explode through it. Inside of 4.30 now. Milk the clock. Start motion with Miller. Run behind it. Whaley is jammed around the 25-yard line, just short of that first down. I know how much you and I think of, uh, I know how much we think of Miller. And even when he doesn't carry the ball, watch the lead block on the corner, Mike Harris. How'd you like to be a tailback? He may have locked on to Harris a little bit, but that's okay. He got away with it, and he's able to push him almost to the sideline. When Bob Stoops says, says that Miller may be the best fullback we've ever had since I've been the head coach at Oklahoma, that says a lot. They've had some good ones. Absolutely. Second down now. The clock ticking away on the Knowles. Whaley bangs for the first down, close to the 20-yard line, and Williams. 
where you, you can't give up if you're Florida State. You got to keep fighting. They've played so well defensively. And each time Oklahoma is able to get a first down, not only are they working clock, they're making it that much easier for Jimmy Stevens to be able to put this game potentially out of reach. You've got to keep fighting. Mark Stoops expecting everything out of this defense. This is where the Knowles badly need a turnover. The Sooners knocking on the door of the red zone. Up by seven. Clock is winding down. And that's one of the reasons why Bob Stoops is sticking with this running back. This is what caught his attention in a scrimmage a while back. Oklahoma and Norman, he said to the fellas, who is that number eight out there? The coach is telling Whaley, he's a walk-on. He came and asked us for a chance. They watched him a little bit more. And the one thing they noticed, he didn't fumble. The second thing they noticed, he would block for the quarterback. So they gave him a chance. He had four touchdowns against Tulsa. And here he is tonight. Coming down the stretch as their number one ball pair when ball security is uppermost in the Oklahoma thought process right now. Do not give it up. And he just burrows in behind the left side of that offensive line. I think when you look at all the backs on their roster, Clay and Finch and even Brandon Williams, it's Whaley because of the weight he's been able to put on and he's maintained his speed. He's got the best combination of skills and the power to be able to come into a game late, late like this when you're trying to work the clock. Third down and two. Won't get there. Now it's going to be up to Stoops to attempt the field goal here to give himself a 10 point margin and on the other side of the ball if ever there was a time when you wanted to block a field goal and you had a way to do it this is the time the one way they can stay in the game clearly here with 205 remaining is to block Jimmy Stevens field goal attempt uh, easier said than done he gets it off pretty good at this distance uh, this is where a veteran team on the road ranked number one dealing with some hostility this is where you expect them to come through you want to be ranked number one you want to deal with that bullseye show the maturity to be able to handle that they made the big drive late to be able to get the lead to get the football back after the interception by Harris and now they methodically work the clock with a veteran quarterback put uh, Stevens in position now to be able to make a field goal let's see if he can Execute it. Austin Woods is the snapper. Wow. wow, it was low, but it goes across from 31 yards. And that gives the Sooners a 10 point lead. Bob, but, are you but kidding look, me? At him, look at that look he had for Venables. Was, you got to be kidding me on the height on this one. Look at this. This is a line drive. Look at Landry over here now. Get across. Oh. <laughs> Get up, 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 up. Oh. All right. Oh, my gosh. Are we going to. Oh, oh, come on, a little higher. Oh. Oh. <laughs> not so close. Still not as. <laughs> then he's like, whoo. Oh, my. <laughs> Now he's got two minutes for this defense, and uh, it has been a punishing defense. In fact, both these defenses deserve praise here tonight, but Oklahoma's has been punishing. They have handed out one hard hit after another, knocked a quarterback and a wide receiver completely out of the game. Created three turnovers, five sacks. So Reed and Joyner go back. Great return and a quick strike. To put them back in business, but they've got to move quickly now. Florida State has exhausted its timeouts. Here's Reed. And he's down at the 15 yard line. And look who the young man who was hurt early, Kenny Shaw, has come back. 
And uh, what a what a great picture that yeah, that great. is. We we saw him carried off on a stretcher, taken to an ambulance, went to a hospital. And as Tom Rinaldi reported, that's, that's huge. The tests were all good, and and here is the young man. He got sandwiched, catching the ball at the goal line, and took some kind of blow. Thompson on the field here to trick it. E.J. Manuel, the Noel starting quarterback, also driven out of the game. And now Trickett goes down at the 10 yard line. Jefferson was in there. Brent, I love the blitz. You've got the 10 point lead. Instead of being conservative and sitting back and prevent, you got an inexperienced quarterback. Bring the house. And that time, Tony Jefferson comes up with a sack, number six tonight for the Sooners. Second down. Throws back against the defense and it'll be third down coming up. You think about what this does for the Sooners. It puts them on track to stock a spot in the All-State BCS National Championship game in New Orleans. Now, doesn't mean they're going to get there. They still got to play the schedule. They got some tough games still ahead of them. But this is a big step forward for Landry Jones and the Sooners. I think they convinced a whole lot of people tonight that the defense, their defense is for real. You get ready to play them, you get you get ready to take some licks from these fellows. Trickett got a lot of time. Fires high, and this one is dropped. And now it is fourth down and 17, and this could be the last snap of the night for the Knowles. Jimbo Fisher trying to make up his mind on what he wants to do. Obviously, you, you got to go for this, but the play clock already starting to move, and Trickett's going to have to be able to get up here, and you know Oklahoma is going to pin their ears back and come after him one more time. From the end zone, incomplete. Oklahoma takes over and the Sooners will leave Tallahassee with their second win of the season as still makes a couple of huge plays here tonight especially the one that put them up by seven when the game was tied Brent Venables the defensive coordinator with Ward who played a great game. Look, look at that. I don't think Venables yeah. is happy with what he did on that play. <laughs> yeah, no, he's just saying avoid that personal foul potentially with a late hit on a quarterback on third and long. But, you know, I, I'm not making excuses for Florida State, but when E.J. Manuel went out of the game, the game plan changed, the, the vibe in the stadium changed, and Trickett did a nice job as a backup, but it's a totally different game, and Brent Venables' defensive approach without that mobility from Manuel changed when they decided to just start attacking Rick, uh, Clint Trickett. Now here's the key for the Knowles and Jimbo Fisher and Herbie talked about it. Don't let the season go down the drain just because of one loss. Yes this was a tough loss. It was a big game. We were ranked number five but there's still the ACC title up ahead of us that we can go for. We've got plenty of time. We hope that Manuel is going to be healthy along with Shaw. Get Reed get everybody healthy because you don't want to let one defeat turn into two. That's they, going to be the critical thing for the Seminoles. And they now. go to Clemson next week, a team that right now is playing with a lot of confidence Absolutely. after their win against Auburn today. So, the favorite formation of any offense, the victory formation. Impressive. Number one team on the road, tough environment, early in the season, only second game of the year. I think you're right. I think they, they, they definitely made a statement and justified that number one ranking. Yeah, no question. Well, we're going to see a team that's up there and has its sights set on New Orleans next week when we go see LSU take on West Virginia. When was the last time you did a game in Morgantown, Herbert? Been a, been a few years. But they, yeah, that play, that play, it's an SEC like atmosphere. That'll be fun. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews with Coach Stoops. I'm going to wait a minute, Brent. He's having a moment there with his brother, Mark. <laughs> I know that's I know that's never easy for you coach. What did you just say to your brother Mark there? Oh, I just said I love you. <laughs> he said the same thing and um, you know I, I hurt for him but uh, 
they played a great, you know, they're a good team. They've done a great job. Hard fought game, nothing to be, you know, everybody should be proud. And, and um, you know, and I, I know that, you know, his defense really played well. Coach, we talked about at the beginning of the game what kind of challenges a hostile environment like this would create for your team. What impressed you the most with how your kids handled the adversity tonight? Uh, obviously, the fourth, fourth quarter when, when when we all of a sudden the crowd's on you, they tie it up, and boom, we come back with two huge you know, offense with the big drive, defense gets the turnover, and we beat up the clock and get a field goal. So. Um, I, I don't. That, I'm. I'm really proud of them. Our, our, our kids really answered. Answered the bell when they had to. Coach, thanks for your time. All right, thanks, sir. All right, Brent. All right, Aaron. Thank you very much. And there you have it. The number one team in the nation comes into Tallahassee. And Herbie, they were impressive, winning it by 10, 23, 13. And I thought Bob Stoops made a very astute point about the the, the point in the game where the crowd really got into it. Florida State had just tied it. Third down, Landry Jones stood in there, dealt with the traffic, made a great throw, and then the very next play, he comes back and he finds Kenny Stills one on one, and Stills goes up and makes the catch for the touchdown. And that is going to do it next Saturday on Saturday Night Football on ABC 8 Eastern. We will be in Morgantown, West Virginia. LSU will take on West Virginia. Can the Tigers keep on rolling? We'll find out next Saturday night. So join us. We thank you for watching ESPN on ABC. Bob Stoops, Landry Jones, and the Sooners win it. We take you to the studio for the Ford wrap-up with Robert Floyd.